and dual the, motor the, the Model thing that S makes this uh, unique and special and sort of better than uh, all-wheel drive in the past is because you can dynamically shift the power from front to rear at the millisecond level. So you can very quickly adjust torque uh, more than is is possible really with a, a mechanically linked system. So all all-wheel drive systems out there are just mechanically linked with with a shaft. So it's it's like the equivalent of being sort of analog. Uh, whereas this is this is a, a digital system, so it, it's it, with a system like this, it's it's uh, inherently able to achieve better road holding than a mechanically linked system that's just there with with a, a single engine. And it, we're able to actually improve almost everything about the car, which is it's a rare case that you're able to do something like that. Uh, the, the, so the, the the acceleration gets a little faster. The top speed is higher, and and uh, something that's 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 I think uh, that is for the first time ever the the range the efficiency actually increases. Okay. So as you as you probably know, with other all -wheel, with, with all all-wheel drive systems out there, um, the, the the you get less mileage. It's less efficient to have uh, to have an all-wheel drive system. But in the case of Model S because we're able to have two drive units where we can shift the power from, from front to rear and, and constantly be at the optimal efficiency point for, for each motor. Uh, we, we're actually able to overcome the penalty of the increased mass of the motor. So any, any given motor or engine has a power versus efficiency curve and the default behavior of the car will be, the first priority of course will be uh, traction control, road holding, um, and then the, the second will be efficiency, and then as soon as you punch the accelerator, it'll just go to max power. And efficiency obviously is less of a concern in that situation. Uh, but, the, but this is this it, literally everything improves about the car with dual motor. Uh, there's there's no there's no sort of technical drawback in this case. Uh, so, and, and we've also in, in the in the highest power version, the P85D. We've actually retained the larger rear motor and added and added the medium-sized motor to the front, which basically gives the, the car about a, half again as much power. Because the P85 started was pretty good, uh, you know, on the power front, as probably a bunch of you have have those cars. Um, but but this this car is is nuts. It's like it's like taking off from a carrier deck. It's just bananas. Um, you know, it's like ha having your own personal roller coaster. They just Use at any time, uh, so that uh, I mean it's it's really mind blowing. But the, the target that we had for performance was to try to meet uh, one of the greatest the, the, the acceleration of one of the greatest supercars of all time, which is the McLaren F1. And so we were able to actually achieve a, a 3.2 second zero to 60. Yeah. yeah, it's mad. Okay. In, in fact, just just you know, we're, we're going to have a, an option the, in, the, in the option selection. Um, you, you'll be able to choose three settings, which is normal, sport, and insane. <laughs> we'll actually say insane. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> uh, so that that's um, it's, it's pretty exciting. We're really really proud of uh, what what uh, our engineering team has been able to accomplish here. It took a, a lot of effort, and I think we've we've got. Uh, a technical solution we're, we're, we can be really, really proud of. And it's also one that will continue to improve over time. So as we, you know, we'll, we'll roll out the initial uh, cars with dual motor, but then we'll um, we'll keep updating the, the software and firmware and improving, for instance, the, the torque vectoring and the, the, the road holding under various circumstances. So it'll, it, it'll keep improving by nuances over time. All right, so let's move to the next, the, the something else, <laughs> which, <laughs> so we've been able to accelerate autopilot and, and bring it bring its market faster than uh, originally anticipated. In fact, the, what, what people haven't quite realized is that all cars produced for the past two weeks have the autopilot hardware. So it's, it's actually in production. In fact, every car coming off the line in Tesla at the factory has the autopilot hardware. So let, let's uh, look at the first uh, the various elements of how we're doing autopilot. It, it consists of a synthesis of, of four different systems. The first is a, a forward-looking radar. 
So that, that's scanning the cars in front of you, and it's, it's, it's quite long range. So it's able to see things at, at a long distance. It's also able to see through fog, through snow, through sand, through anything, basically. All right, moving on to the A. Um, the, so we, we, it consists of four parts. The, the first part is the long range uh, uh, radar, which can see through basically anything. And uh, the, then the, the next element is a camera with uh, image recognition, so it, it's able to read stop signs, distinguish uh, pedestrians, uh, uh, look at traffic lights, and, and also serve as a backup system to the radar. The third system is a 360 degree uh, uh, long range ultrasonic sonar. Uh, so this, this, this basically establishes a protective cocoon around the vehicle and it will attempt to make whatever the sort of smart move is um, from a safety standpoint looking at the ultrasonics. Now the good thing about the ultrasonics is they can see even soft objects. So you, uh, they can see a sort of a small child or even a dog. Um, they can, they're, they're, they're very sensitive and they operate at all speeds. So you're able to, to do this from zero miles an hour to 155 miles an hour. And it's, so it, it'll detect if there's a car in your blind spot, if you've got a, a highway barrier on one side, if there's a, you know, something you might you know, move into in any, any way possible. Um, and then the, the final element is integrating that with the navigation um, and to basically the GPS system and real-time traffic. So we integrate those four systems in. The, the car can do almost anything. Uh, so we're able to uh, obviously do lane keeping on freeways, do uh, automatic cruise control, uh, active emergency uh, braking so that uh, it'll break if it sees any object that you're going to collide with. Um, and um, it'll do, it'll, it'll self park. So it'll be automatic parallel parking, automatically going to a garage. Um, in fact, it'll, when you, you get home, you'll actually be able to, to just step out of the car and have it park itself in your garage, including it, it'll, it'll open the door and it'll go in and park itself. Um, and then, then something, something I'd like to do, um, uh, which I think many of our engineers will be hearing this in real time, um, <laughs> is, is have the charge connector plug itself in. <laughs> Like, like an articulating, like a sort of a snake, like Metal Gear Solid or something. Um, yeah, like just plug itself in. Um, so th I, th I think we'll, I, we'll, we'll probably do something like that. Um, so then you can just get out of your car and go park itself in your garage. Um, and then uh, going, going a step further, you, um, you'll be able to summon the car if you're on private property. Oh, you have to be on private property for this. Um, you can actually summon the car, and the car will come to wherever you are, and it'll 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 use the ultrasonic sensors, kind of like a insect antenna, because um, it can it can detect even small soft objects with the the ultras with with the ultrasonics, and and just it'll sort of slowly make its way to you, and, and then and then stop and be ready to go. It can actually go even a step beyond that, which is if you have if you have your calendar turned on, it'll it'll meet you there. <laughs> And so if, you, if you're getting ready to go to work or something and, and it knows, oh, you're, you're going to need to leave uh, half an hour before work, you can say, okay, I'd, I'd like you to just uh, come out and have the air conditioning done and everything done, uh, your, your music playing, everything's just ready to go and it'll just come and, and be there. So. A very important point, though, in, in addition to the sensors, we, we, you have to have precise control. So we, we, we have an all digital control system, high precision, um, really low latency um, uh, control system. Starting with the, the motors, obviously they're, they're electric motors, they don't have the latency and the, the sort of slow uh, spool up of uh, gasoline engines. Then uh, we go to the, the, the brakes. So we've, um, one of the big upgrades to the car is an electromechanical braking system. So it's able, it's one of the most advanced braking systems in the world. It's able to very precisely control the amount of braking and also get to, to high braking levels very, very quickly. Uh, instead of having the normal vacuum assist system, uh, this, is, this is an electromechanical system. And then uh, we've got the, and that, that's combined with an electric steering, 
So it's electric power steering. So the whole, the whole, the whole system is sort of fully electric, neutral control, low latency. This is all really important to having a great uh, driving experience so that the car is doing things in a, in a, in a natural way. All right, next one. So this gives you a, a sense of the, the new interface. Um, and uh, the, 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 you can actually sort of see where cars or, or obstacles are around the car on the, on the instrument panel. So it'll actually show cars that are either the distance of the car ahead of you, cars moving to the, to the sides and behind. And, um, and you, can, you can adjust the sensitivity of the autopilot. So do you want to be in a sort of aggressive autopilot or you know, less aggressive? Um, and uh, yeah, so it's, and it, it'll warn you with sort of the, it, with initially a, a, a visual warning if there's a potential collision risk, you know, like sort of turn, turn the object red, and then it'll give you an audible warning if you don't see that. And of course, it'll it'll res, it'll resist steering into things that things are danger. So you can still overpower the, the steering, but it's going to give you a tactile feedback that you're you're probably uh, headed towards something that the car thinks may be dangerous.